La personne en face de vous essaie de vous frapper. You might see that in the real world. Vous pouvez voir ça dans la vraie vie. But we were taught that when we did this, we're reaching up here to get power to strike. Donc on, on, dans ce mouvement, on va monter haut le bras pour avoir la puissance et ensuite descendre. So they showed in the old Japanese books that he goes to do uh, a front snap here. Ok, donc my guy. And we come here. Bang. There's better ways to deal with it. Okay. Okay. Il y a plein de choses, il y a une meilleure façon de faire pour contrer ce coup de pied. But if he does something that people would do, they post stuff on me. Here. Now he can't hit me. He can't kick me. He can't do anything else, right? So now this is very basic at this level. You can allow them to touch you. You go here. So that's a starting point. When you practice, if he's here, he goes the other side. And this side. If I get here and I locate, that's it. I start to swing. Donc je commence à faire le mouvement pour faire the la not taken up until I'm three quarters of the way through the movement. Donc la tension en fait, elle, est, elle va démarrer à partir du moment j'ai déjà fait une partie de mon mouvement. I don't have control to way down there. J'ai aucun contrôle jusqu'au moment où j'arrive à ce point-là. Donc j'ai un temps de latence en fait. So if I grab this and move it, you can still do things to me. Donc pendant ce temps-là, j'ai ce temps de latence, lui il peut réagir. But if I come here, there's no time for him to do anything because I took up the slack. Mais j'ai en fait j'ai créé la tension qui me permet de pouvoir réaliser ma clé. Okay, let's go. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Hello, the master of uh, Indian Bata. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? I'm going to say it in French. Bonjour, uh, uh, Maître Indian Bata. Uh, Est-ce que vous pouvez vous présenter? My name is William Higginbotham. I'm from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. I've been in martial arts since uh, September of 1968. Did a lot of sport for several years, and uh, when I met uh, George Delman in uh, 1985, I found out I didn't know why I was doing my karate katas, and I found out the truth. The truth has set me free, and it's been great, um, and it's um, changed my life as far as how I look at martial arts uh, today, and because of meeting that man, uh, he opened a lot of other doors for me. Okay. Uh, vous avez, uh, à moins que je me trompe, uh, uh, été un pratiquant de karaté au début de votre carrière martiale. Comment vous êtes-vous connecté au Small Circle Jiu-Jitsu pour la première fois? Et qu'est-ce qui a enclenché votre désir d'apprendre davantage de cet art? You have, unless I'm wrong, trained primarily in karate. How did, how did you connect to Small Circle Jiu-Jitsu for the first time? What triggered your desire to learn the arts? More. That's actually a simple question. Uh, about a year after I met uh, Grandmaster Dillman, back in 1985, in the fall of 1986, he brought Professor Waller J with him uh, to my city, and I had to go see him. And when I saw him, I just instantly fell in love with the small circle jiu-jitsu movements. I knew I had to learn what Professor Jay was doing, because I knew it would make me a better martial artist and a person more capable of teaching people real self-defense. Vous étiez un élève du professeur Wally Jay. Comment était-il? Est-ce que vous pouvez nous décrire quel homme était-il? You were a student of Professor Wally Jay. What was he like? Could you describe him for us, please? Wally Jay was actually born the same year my father was, so I kind of looked up to him in, in that, that way somewhat. Uh, Wally Jay was a compassionate man and, and totally into what he was teaching and committed to helping people learn it uh, at a level where he would be proud of them. Uh, he, was, he was just a great guy. Everybody loved Wally Jay. Uh, And, and he, in the early days, as I understand it, had a rough time convincing people that what he was doing 
was the right way to go, but it didn't take too long for people to see the wisdom in his thoughts. It didn't take people too long to see that this was the right man to come along and make changes in the martial arts that would make everybody better. Okay. Uh, comment étaient organisés les entraînements avec le professeur Waliji? How was organized a, a training uh, with Professor Waliji in general? Any, any specificities? Anything in particular? His way was to demonstrate both visually in doing the movements and do every, he would start every seminar. Everybody do this please. This is vertical wrist extension. And he'd say, say can I use you? And he would, he would do the technique on someone like a finger lock or a wrist lock and show how the wrist extension actually made that technique work. When does your mind kick in and say, oh, I better do something Oh, je suis pas bien, je, je vais peut-être faire quelque chose sur vous. Puis il vient. Oh, je vais dans le pied, donc je dois faire une autre technique. Si je viens ici et je me sens flexible, je sens de la flexibilité au niveau de ses doigts. Je peux créer avec votre main une tension supplémentaire pour que ma clé soit plus efficace. C'est comme une base de mouvement. Je pousse. Donc je bouge ma base en fait. It's why the two-way action. One of the principles, principle number 11, two-way action. Le principe numéro 11, c'est la double action opposée. When he pushes, <laughs> cut, twist, then lock. We call this one up. Hello. <laughs> <laughs>
relax a little bit. Here we go. De quoi vous vous souvenez le plus du professeur Walidje, à la fois sur l'aspect humain ou en tant qu'artiste martial What do you remember the most from Professor Walidje on humanities and as a martial artist in two words for each He was very approachable it didn't matter who asked him a question he was willing to answer their question to the best of his ability He never took himself as being uh, too good to speak to anyone, and there's many martial artists that are that way, not Wally J. If a young person at a seminar or camp walked up and asked him a question, he felt obligated to have a discussion with that young person, and there are many martial artists who don't have that openness. He was a great teacher, And he led by example. He backed up everything he said that he could do. He explained things very thoroughly. You can't ask for more. And he was in the, he was the innovator. He was the creator of many of these techniques and all. And he created his own system of small circle jujitsu that had all these principles. That because he was a scientifically kind of thought type person, he looked at principles of physical movement and weightlifting and, and uh, boxing and, and uh, his lifelong passion of the martial arts and he took things that didn't work reliably and found ways to make them work more reliably and effectively. And so he was an innovator, he was a, an amazing person to just watch and view uh, and he has passed that on to his son Professor Leon. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one last question. Uh, one simple question. Any last word you would like to say? Anything to add? So, so, so generally what was great about Wally was, gosh, he was the innovator. He was the creator of his own system that uh, was a landmark system that people all related to. They all saw, they would see the wisdom in his thinking and his thought process. He took weak, uh, weak techniques, techniques that were maybe marginally good and maybe sometimes only worked because of strength. He showed how it worked through pure technique where strength and physical uh, um, awareness and all the, the, the physical strength and all that was not, the athleticism was kind of taken out of it. It was a technique that anybody could do. He in innovated, I believe, uh, finger locking into the system And he showed that to the Japanese at the Budokan and amazed them at how easy you could control a human being. They, hadn't, they were blown away by it. So I think worldwide, he probably changed the face of jiu-jitsu uh, worldwide, I believe, because people talk about, oh, here's a Wally J technique. Even if they do, don't do small circle, they've been impressed by something he did that was an innovation to things that um, needed to be done to be able to control a human being that was attacking someone. And he was dedicated to that concept of, of uh, making things work as close to 100% as possible. We know that things aren't 100%, but a lot of techniques were questionable, and he fixed a lot of that stuff. A, a great majority of anything that was questionable in the martial arts, in his judo, he, he made changes to how um, he was originally taught and uh, he had a great competitive team uh, in his jiu-jitsu. He came up with techniques that we can now teach to people who know most nothing and get them to do something in a relatively short period of time. That's an amazing feat. Okay.
Thank you, Grandmaster Will Ian Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.